All right, in this section, we're going to derive one of the truly beautiful things in mathematics. Um, if you study sequences and series with an emphasis in calculus, we can find that different functions can be represented by different series, and we're going to look at three in particular, sine x, cosine x, and e to the x. Um, where these come from is an entirely different discussion, but just take my word for it at this point, if you haven't made this study yet, that sine of x is equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial and so on and so on indefinitely. This is an infinite series. It's an alternate infinite series. Similarly, cosine is 1 plus x squared over 2 plus yada, yada, yada. And e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on and so on and so on. My question is, what is e to the i x? Well, we can make a substitution into e to the x. So this is equal to 1 plus i x plus i squared x squared over 2 factorial, if you will, plus i cubed, x cubed over 3 factorial, plus i to the 4th, x to the 4th over 4 factorial, plus, and you might be wondering how much longer is this guy going to keep going with these terms, and the answer is I'm going to stop right here and put an ellipsis, meaning it goes on forever. Could have stopped wherever I wanted to, I'm going to stop right here. Now, Here's something that you hopefully know. With imaginary numbers, there's i, there's i squared, there's i cubed, there's i to the fourth, there's i to the fifth, and so on and so on, right? But i squared is equal to negative one. i cubed is opposite of i. i to the fourth is positive one, and i to the fifth is equivalent to i, and then this cycle repeats itself over and over and over again. So what that allows me to do is I can substitute for these i's in this expansion down here in this series, and I get 1 plus ix plus, or should I say, minus x squared over 2 factorial minus ix cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, plus ix to the 5th over 5 factorial, and so on and so on. And if I group some things together, we might notice something important and might clue us into why I wrote these two down up here. One, I'm going to group together the things that don't have an i. All of those terms, all the even powered terms are not going to have an i in it. Plus the rest all have i, so I'm going to factor that out and I get x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial plus so on and so on. And wouldn't you know that's just cosine of x plus i sine of x. So, e to the i x is equal to that. So, um, how about this polar form for a complex number? r cosine theta plus i sine theta. Well, Euler's notation says that that's the same thing as r e to the i theta. So here we have yet another form to express a complex number in. This r e to the i theta is Euler's notation for a complex number. So let's use it. I want to take these three complex numbers. I don't know what the argument is. Um, and I want to multiply and divide them. Well, it's really difficult to do through foiling and dividing, and well, when we divide with complex numbers, we have to multiply by the conjugate, and this is going to get really, really icky. But 
if we convert each of these into Euler's form, this becomes very, very easy. This first complex number, the modulus of it is 1. So we have 1 e to the i 6 theta times, again, modulus is 1 of the second complex number, e i 3 theta over e i the 4 theta. Now we can simplify this just using laws of exponents. We add when we multiply common bases, and we subtract when we divide the same bases. So in the numerator, we have e to the i 9 theta over e to the i 4 theta. And subtracting, we get e to the i 5 theta. And in its polar form, this is just cosine 5 theta plus i sine 5 theta. Euler's notation allows us to do some very quick, easy calculations because we are now are just dealing with the same base and exponents. And gosh, that's old for us. That We've been doing that for a while. Last example, I want to evaluate e to the i pi, the opposite of that. Well, to evaluate this and find what this is equal to, I'm going to switch into polar form. It would be cosine pi plus i sine pi. And the modulus is negative 1. Well, I know the cosine of pi. The cosine of pi is negative 1. And the sine of pi is 0. So this is equal to 1. Wow, so the opposite of e to the i pi is equal to 1. Mind-blowingly cool that we can take e, raise it to i, and to pi, another irrational transcendental number, and we get 1? Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This is so awesome that I had my wife make a custom-made shirt for my son on his first birthday. And on that shirt, it said that. That's it. Just said opposite e to the i pi because everybody knows that that's 1. And on a kid's first birthday, you want a shirt that says 1. How cool is that? I leave you there. Have a great day.